if you got the choice of whether you wanted to take a plunge in the cold winter waters of the Pacific Ocean or wait until the warmer summer weather came to take a swim, which would you choose? One of my favorite summertime rituals is to head down to the waterfront in the evening when the tide is in and take a swim. You see, during the day the tide is out and the sun warms up the sand and then when the tide comes in in the evenings and invades the shoreline, it heats up the water and it makes it perfect for that evening swim. But more and more as I wander the beaches of Vancouver Island during the past few years, I've been meeting people who are choosing to take their swim in the frigid cold waters during the winter months rather than during that warm summertime experience that I was talking about. Why? Welcome to Vancouver Island Explored, Winter Wonderland. My name is Dan King, and I live on an island in the Pacific Ocean off the west coast of Canada. Over the last few years, I've been showing off this incredible place that I call home to people from all over the world. Last season, it was all about my favorite summer destinations. But this time around, I'm inviting you to join me in exploring the beauty of the winter months here. And I want to introduce you to some of the interesting people that I've met along the way. Welcome to Vancouver Island Explored, Winter Wonderland. Well, as I mentioned, more and more I'm seeing people who are choosing to swim during the cold winter months of Vancouver Island rather than the nice warm summer season. Now, one of the things I've never done before is approach anybody who's cold water swimming and ask them, why do you do what you do? How did you get started? What do you love about this? Today, that might be the perfect way to begin exploring this wintertime activity. There's people over here. Let's, uh, let's go talk to them. Well, my name's Nicole. Um, I live just up the road in Nanus Bay. I've been on the island for four years. Um, I've been doing this cold dipping for maybe a couple of years now. Not every day because I actually work at a ski resort in the interior. So when I'm home, I do it. I first dipped on my birthday two years ago, which was February. So we're coming up to two years on Hornby Island. <laughs> and then I, I had friends in the Okanagan who were doing it and I'd be kind of intrigued by it and now I'm hooked and I'm from Australia too so I'm also just on a mission to try and get tougher in cold water it's yeah. fun to find out fun, mm -hmm. there's other people doing the same thing <laughs> yeah. the sun is out today and it's 12 degrees and that was nice yeah our last dip I think mm -hmm. was mine was four degrees Mine, mine was in the Okanagan and it was minus five oh, yeah, and yeah. there was and snow right yeah <laughs> So that was super interesting. The only experience I've had with cold water swimming, if you can even call it that, is New Year's Day polar bear swims where you've got hundreds of people on the beach, somebody counts down, you all run into the water together, you kind of go under for a millisecond, pop out and then all run back. I did it one time with a bunch of friends. We were shooting a video and we knew we were gonna be in the water for a long time and so I actually, underneath the costume, I had a wetsuit on. So I don't think that one counts, but it was a lot of fun. People came early to get in line to register. There was snow on the ground. It was a really crisp day, cool day. I dressed up like a snowman because I thought it was appropriate. I had to bring along my inflatable pineapple. Met lots of friends who also had crazy outfits. Got interviewed by the news. And when that gun went off, we all headed down into the water and it was very, very cold. But with all the hype and all the people, it was just a lot of fun. And we went down and in the water and then immediately came back out and started off the new year. But perhaps it's time for me to do it again, especially because of this activity that we are exploring together. It's almost New Year's coincidentally, and I have the perfect polar bear plunge in mind. I've never been to it before, but you and I, we can go and check it out together. Let's go. So 
So I found myself here at Saratoga Beach on the east coast of Vancouver Island. This is the site of one of the longest running polar bear swims that happens on New Year's Day anywhere here on the east coast. And at noon, in just an hour or so, there's gonna be hundreds of people that run down the beach and into the cold ocean waters. It's plus three degrees Celsius today. I can see my breath. And as we continue to explore this idea of dipping in the ocean in the winter on Vancouver Island is something fun to do, I figured it's probably time for me to jump in and experience it myself. So today, I'm gonna be talking to people, finding out why they do it, and joining them. So let's go. My name is Carrie, and I'm with the Black Creek Community Association. And today we're bringing in 2023 with our annual polar bear swim, which we hold every year at Saratoga Beach and was started in approximately 1970 by uh, my father's grandmother, Doreen. We're thinking we had approximately four to 500 participants uh, starting from age of under one year old up to about 80 years old. Well, we went in the water, we took the polar bear dip with hundreds of other people here on New Year's Day, and it was another adventure on Vancouver Island Explored. I'm cold. I I'm gonna go get warm again. So uh, my name is Tony Roberts, and uh, this will be my 37th year doing the polar bear swim here in Campbell River. Uh, I started uh, the year I graduated, which would have been 1986. And the first year we came down there, it's about 12 of us all together in the group, about uh, four inches of snow on the ground, and we all ran in. Uh, 2002, I actually got married at the polar bear swim here. So uh, a lot of people showed up that day to uh, come to a wedding. And uh, here we are now almost 20 years later, of course, and uh, we're, uh, we're still doing it. So happy polar bear swim. My name's Leisha. I'm one of the founders of the Coldwater Cult. Um, we're a newer cult, no Kool-Aid needed. We're um, formed about uh, actually October 31st. Um, another girl met me while I was doing one of my swims. She said she liked it and wanted to do it too. Uh, she's done it before and next thing I know, uh, we posted it on Instagram and we had lots of people messaging us going, I wanna come, I wanna come. We started a group chat. Next thing we know, um, we started an Instagram and it's just blown up. Um, we're getting members from Vancouver. We're getting members from Comox, uh, Nanaimo. I think I have a girl in Powell River starting. Um, and uh, yeah, so just the group is all about just linking up other cold water swimmers, uh, creating little groups, little chat groups so they can meet up and go for swims, um, have fun, be safe, and just enjoy. <laughs> Tell me about cold water swimming. Uh, well, I went into cold water swimming blind. I had no idea the effects or benefits. I just, I wanted to, I wanted to get used to the cold water. I was avoiding it. And so I was forcing myself to go in. And I live surrounded by um, a, a river that's beautiful, but freezing. Um, so I just started forcing myself to go in every day and then as I did it I started noticing the benefits. I started noticing, oh, like I have uh, chronic problems with pain in my, my hips and things like that and I stand all day for work and my hips don't hurt anymore. When I go, if I don't go in the morning, I go in the afternoon, I notice I'm really grumpy and I'm like, what's, what's with that? And I go in the water and then I feel great. 
and I'm like, okay. And so I'm, I'm really starting to notice all the benefits from it. So just, <laughs> just all around, just all the benefits. I've been sick. Um, I, I've had strep throat. I've had COVID, and I still continue to go on the water. Um, kind of endless the the benefits that I've been getting from it yeah. body image comp like getting confident with uh with your body and being in a bathing suit and some some people it can be a big deal and I, you just kind of like you, you get more used to seeing yourself in a bathing suit and it's not such a big deal anymore it's just like yep cool this is this is me this is what I am I'm sure there's a lot more but I just can't think of it right now. yeah yeah my name is Leisha, and I've gone swimming every day in the river or ocean or lake for 522 days. Well, that was a great event, and it was a lot of fun to take a dip as well, even if it was just uh, a quick one. But what was even more interesting was meeting all these people and hearing their stories. I was especially interested in this cold water cult that Leisha has brought together, these people who are daily dipping. And so I thought it might be interesting to spend some more time with her and some of her friends and learn a little bit more. Now, for those of you to hear about this recent resurgence of this ancient cold water plunging practice, it traces its roots back to the ancient Greeks, who used it as a tool to ease muscle fatigue, and then continued to be developed by the early Roman as well as Renaissance physicians. And even today, it continues to evolve as a method recognized to help stimulate our central nervous system. I wanted to ask some of the cold water cult members why they've chosen to do this, not once in a while, like the people we met at the beginning of this episode, not once a year, like I've done with the polar bear swim, but like Leisha's done for over 500 days straight. It's a daily discipline. Why has this become such a fixture in their day-to-day -day lives? Um, I got into cold dipping the beginning of December. Um, I had heard all of the, you know, mental health benefits of cold dipping and there, the beach that I just moved to, um, a bunch of girls were doing their cold dips and having that account, those accountability, accountability partners made it easier to get in the water and to start just going every single day and since December I've noticed my mood has changed my like my anxiety like depressive thoughts have basically vanished since I started uh, cold dipping so it's been a great change um, and I'm gonna keep doing it <laughs> and I didn't intentionally do it but I went with a group that was there we were at a pub and when it was pretty cold <laughs> and since then I've done lots on the west coast Tofino um, and North Island so yeah it's it takes your breath away it's just this rush rush <laughs> what do you love most about it uh, the clarity afterwards the clarity afterwards ah <laughs> <sighs> I think especially when your head goes under, it's like a euphoric feeling. It's like you can feel you your your body just like it is a little bit of a shock, but your body just feels like euphoria that kind of floods your brain and it floods your body with this. <laughs> it kind of feels weird, but it's like a warmth almost. Um, it's awesome. There are no ends, it seems, to the activities you can do here on Vancouver Island in the winter time. Whether it's celebrating a New Year's with a polar bear dip or getting together with your friends on a daily basis to do a cold water plunge. There's so many people to meet and there's so many things to explore here on this island off the west coast of Canada in the Pacific Ocean. We're just getting started, just kind of beginning to dip our toes into all that happens here in the winter. Here's a sneak peek at what's coming up next. The Wild Pacific Trail runs along the coastal shoreline with loads of very accessible cliffs 
and lookouts to watch the waves crash and smash the rocks. Well, today the, the rain's held back for most of my hike, but the views, the views were spectacular. So that's next time on Vancouver Island Explored, Winter Wonderland. Don't you ever stop.